Okay, uh, so obviously you, you wonder how these chain letters evolve. Mo in modern days, these chain letters, I don't know how they evolve. You send an email and forward the email to everybody, spam, so you don't have to do anything. So, so the, the email remains identical. They don't probably evolve too much. But in the uh, old days, chain letters evolve in a very, very natural way. Uh, so this is one of the letters we have re received uh, from the Charles Bennett collection. Uh, as you can see, nobody can read it. I cannot, you cannot, nobody can. So, so th therefore, what do you do? <laughs> so you receive such, such a chain letter, you try to read letter by letter and retype it, right? So when you retype, evolution happens, <laughs> right? So, so then his life becomes his wife and all that stuff happen. <laughs> uh, so then sometimes people introduce a paragraph, sometimes swap a paragraph. And everything, all these uh, evolutionary has, uh, mutation naturally happen like uh, in our body, in the genes. Okay, uh, I don't have too much time left. <laughs> um, so the question is how do we, uh, so we've got these letters. How do, do I construct a evolutionary history of these letters? Essentially, what we do is the following. We, we would measure the similarity between the two letters, uh, then the closer, uh, if they are, uh, the two letters have a small, small distance, then they are together. If they have bigger distance, they are farther away, and then you construct a tree like that, somehow. <laughs> um, now, the, the question, the first question I have to answer first, and the second question I'm not gonna answer. So the first quest question is um, that how do you measure the distance of two letters? Now, Especially, I want, I want to define a distance that has nothing to do with letters. Remember, I also have to worry about genes. I also have to worry about other things, maybe English documents, maybe, maybe plagiarized programs. Uh, so I want to measure the distance between any two information carrying entities, not just chain letters. So the chain letters will be one of the examples, but, but, but I want a general measure, measure, measure two information carrying entities. So what do I do? Uh, so I mentioned this part. Uh, so the classical approach uh, wouldn't work. So the, essentially the classical, classical work uh, uh, distances, like the Hamming distance, Euclidean distance, uh, the, if you try to measure the distance between these two, guys, uh, two pictures, so these two pictures is just a flip of the other. So it's a transformation, right? I mean, it's a flipping of uh, uh, one picture to the other. Uh, I don't know why these two flags become so small, but, uh, but if, you look, if you look at these two flags, uh, they are, I think it's apple. <laughs> it was larger flags before. Uh, so, so one flag is a negative picture of the other guy. Uh, so therefore, uh, if you use a Hamming distance where you look at the, the, the sum of the pixel, pixel differences, uh, this will be maximized. So, so classical, a classical distance to measure the dis uh, information distance between any two information entities, uh, well, any, any of these classical approaches will fail. So what we will do is from a first principles, Okay, so this is actually uh, involve a lot of research, but I'll quickly tell you what this is. Um, let's look at computing. Uh, computers, everybody, you work with computers, right? So you, the, the, there's a computer and you have input, you have output, and it dissipates some heat. heat. So it's essentially this is computing. Okay, now the, the, the fundamental question for computing is does computing cost energy? It, does information processing necessarily cost energy? Uh, this question has been answered by von Neumann 50 half century ago, more than half, half a century ago. Essentially, von Neumann says that, that to, to process one single bit of information, uh, you need one kT of energy. I will not get into details, but, but essentially 1 kT. K is uh, the Boltzmann constant, the T is the room temperature. Okay, so that's the, the thermodynamic limit. So what, what we'll do is to, f to start from this physical law, that one, to process one bit is, one K, uh, is, is uh, uh, cost you 1 kT. So essentially, let's look at the two 
uh, information, the two information uh, carrying entities, X and Y. The, these may be two chain letters, maybe two genes, maybe two genomes, maybe two English documents, maybe two pictures, anything, just X and Y. Okay, now if you wish to measure the distance between X and Y, what I will define is the smallest energy to convert between X and Y. Uh, so that, that uh, P is the smallest number of bits, essentially, right? Remember von Neumann, one bit, one KT. So, so if I use smallest number of bits, that's small, smallest number of KTs uh, to convert between X and Y. Okay, th so that, that, that's all I, I will use. And from that, I can prove a fundamental theorem, theorem saying the following, that the energy needed to convert between X and Y is precisely uh, K X Y K Y X. Take the larger guy. What is K? K is simply compression. Uh, initially, uh, uh, so we we mentioned about compression in the, in in this uh, section. Uh, so K is just our way of defining compression, the optimal compression. So co compress X given Y for free, or compress Y given X for for free. Take whichever one is large. That's the amount of energy that's needed to convert between X and Y. And that's mathematically proved. OK, so based on this fundamental theorem, all we do is following. We take 33 chain letters, compute the energy between every two pair of letters, and construct, uh, then, then put them together. And we have an uh, uh, evolutionary history of these chain letters. Uh, so this was published in the Scientific American uh, several years ago. Um, so uh, this actually also answers some chain letter uh, uh, question on how they have evolved. Uh, certainly, you are asking me why this is a correct phylogeny, the, the uh, history of these chain letters. Uh, what I can tell you, one thing, is that this is a perfect phylogeny in the sense that this is uh, every single mutation is grouped together. Now, if you if, if I tell you that there is a mutation, there's a $60,000, $50,000 lottery mutation C. Now, if that mutation also happens elsewhere in the tree, then certainly this is not very believable. Right? If, if every mutation happens only one, at one uh, place in this phylogeny, then this is at least more believable. So if you look at this tree, uh, this tree you can see a uh, uh, sort of a history from uh, uh, initially, the, 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 look at the, the rightmost column. Uh, so, so the top few letters have the title "Trust in Lord." Then later, the, the title becomes uh, "And all things, uh, and all things, whatever." Uh, then the, the title becomes "With Love, All Things Are Possible," and later it becomes uh, "Kiss Someone You Love and uh, Make Magic." <laughs> uh, uh, Sorry. Okay. So I think I'm running out of time. Uh, so the 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 paper has been, was was published in a Scientific American. As for some of you who are interested in lear, uh, in learning more of this, and you can you can read. I can I can uh, we I can give you the Scientific American article. Uh, so the the method. Uh, has been applied to hundreds of other applications uh, to, to, to measure similarities of uh, molecular evolution, plagiarism detection. Say, if you write, a, I mean, if a, one of those, one of you might be school teachers and the students write uh, in the university. Some students copy their programs. Uh, we 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 catch them by by these kind of programs. Uh, check whether check the information distance between the two programs. Uh, if they, were, they are too close, then they are probably copied and this, that sort of things. Um, uh, then, then the language trees and the image registry and music classification, hierarchy risk assessment, many other things, fatal heartbeat, uh, heartbeat uh, 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 time series, um, and in, uh, internet search. Okay, uh, so let me summarize. Uh, what we have learned is the following. By compressing chain letters, just get comparing, comparing every pair of chain letters, we can, uh, and all genomes, all images, we can find how similar they are. Uh, so the chain letters actually provide a real life uh, and a verifiable example for our phylogenic uh, algorithms. 
and, and to study the, 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 the genomes. And certainly, computer science is fun. You can study chain letters. 